Hello ladies and gentlemen. As we all know the world is facing a horrid time due to COVID-19 and the construction industry also has been adversely affected by this pandemic. There are many challenges that consulting firms are facing like staff not attending office regularly, movement of people to project sites, deployment of staff on projects, day-to-day -day monitoring of projects etc. MSV has visualized the challenges related to covid and we have created sops to work in these tough times barring a few cases we have been successful in fighting this deadly disease and have continued to provide uninterrupted consultancy services we reorganized and reoriented the company so that everyone remains in touch with all the team members at all times electronically and digitally our head office staff was provided with laptops internet access Microsoft Teams and Webex to conduct virtual meetings, exchange files and documents and stay connected with the team from their respective homes. COVID-19 could not dampen our spirits as more than 90% of our team members continued to stay at more than 100 plus project sites of MSV. Our HR department played a crucial role and regained the pace of work in a short time. Our head office and HR stayed in constant touch with our esteemed clients and provided feedback and monthly reports regularly. Innovative approach, good leadership and high motivation paid off well. During COVID times, MSV submitted bids on more than 200 projects and we won more than 30 projects uh, adding to 150 crores in consulting fee from March 20 to October 2020 which is a great achievement. MSV took a landmark decision to curtail company profits and release additional financial resources to provide full salaries to all our 1400 plus staff and employees during these challenging times to ensure that everybody has a smile on his face. I would now like to take this opportunity to talk about some of the irrigation and agriculture projects undertaken by MSV Inc. We have uh, worked on irrigation projects world over and uh, most of our projects have been done in India, Africa and US. Some of the projects undertaken by the chairman of MSV, Mr. Malik, in United States are Smamish Canal Modifications for the Department of Ecology in the state of Washington, USA. We also did a project for Uplek Basin canal systems uh, in Washington state. We also did uh, modifications and extension of uh, existing Wenatchee canal systems in the state of uh, Washington. We have uh, recently finished a project in uh, Africa uh, for design and construction supervision of irrigation schemes uh, for a World Bank funded project in Ghana. We also completed uh, two projects uh, in India which were funded by the World Bank. The first one was the Andhra Pradesh community based tank management project and the Odisha community tank management project. I will be talking about these projects in detail. We also provided consultancy services for construction supervision and quality assurance for reconditioning and rehabilitation of distributaries and miners in Bhatinda and Faridkot in Punjab. We have uh, provided supervision and uh, quality control services for uh, Patiana Canal Division also. We did the Andhra Pradesh community based tank management project and we provided third party services. As per a World Bank study, the tank irrigation system in Andhra Pradesh is centuries old. Tank system structures were mostly constructed to support the basic human needs. Between 1999 and 2006, agriculture grew at 2.5% per year with almost all growth coming from livestock and fishery subsectors. However, the crop subsector, which accounted for about 60% of the state's domestic production from agriculture, stagnated. Consecutive droughts and inadequate investments in irrigation were the key factors for poor agriculture performance. Farmers who did not have access to canal irrigation relied on surface irrigation from tax for cultivation in addition to rainfall during the monsoon season. The state of Andhra Pradesh 
had the largest number of tanks approximately 74,000 and the largest area irrigated by tanks in India. However, from 1999 to 2005, the state saw a steady decline in tank-based irrigation. From 1 million hectares, it was reduced to 0.5 million hectares due to lack of maintenance and increase in use of groundwater for irrigation. Most tanks were performing well below their capacity and the percentage of actual area irrigated to potential created varied between 35 to 55 percent depending upon rainfall. The components and objectives of the project were institutional strengthening to enable uh, community-based institutions, water user association and fishing cooperative societies, farmers' interests assume greater responsibility for tank management and for improvement of tank-based agriculture livelihoods. Second was uh, minor irrigation systems improvement to enhance the efficiency of water use in tank areas selected under the project. Activities to be undertaken fall under uh, two subcomponents: tank system improvements and uh, objectives of the subcomponents were to improve the physical and operational performance of selected tank systems, uh, then secure the safety of the tank structures improve on farm water management and water use efficiency. Participatory groundwater management to enable groundwater users in those tank systems that are subject to groundwater stress to improve the management of their groundwater resources and thereby enhance their agriculture productivity. Thirdly was agriculture livelihood support services to enhance tank based livelihoods by increasing production productivity and profitability of the agriculture, horticulture, fisheries, livelihood and other significant productive activities. MSV's role in the ACTMP project was repairing and rehabilitating almost 3000 minor irrigation tanks with a command area greater than 40 hectares covering 2.5 lakh hectares on a sustainable basis. MSV provided third-party quality control and quality assurance services for unit 4 and unit 5 for rehabilitation of the tank systems and implementation of tank safety remedial works under the AP CBTMP. Uh, the services provided by MSV on the Andhra Pradesh project were design review and review of project drawings to ensure that the quality of works along with workmanship is confronting to technical specification to ensure sound construction, construction procedures including deployment of state-of-the-art engineering instruments to undertake monitoring of the quality of materials used to carry out field tests required for assuring the quality to suggest measures for rectifying the defects to inspect the works and design aspects and suggest improvements to check the accuracy of methodology and equipment used in QC labs and uh, to build capacities and uh, provide uh, professional training. The outcomes of uh, ACTMP after we provided uh, services to the Andhra Pradesh government were firstly agriculture and water productivity, rice, paddy, maize, groundnuts and vegetables saw a productivity increase varying from 36% to 40% respectively against uh, targets of 25 to 30 percent. So we exceeded the expectations. Water productivity calculated as crop output per unit of water from uh, groundwater irrigation increased by almost 40 percent exceeding the targets of uh, 10 percent. Crop diversification. Rice paddy covered 75 percent of the cultivated area against a target of 66 percent though results were better than expected in some drought prone areas. Marketing produce. The creation of commodity interest groups helped increase the final sale value of rice paddy, groundnut and maize by 9 to 17%. Fisheries. All the tank based fishing communities adopted improved fish production and harvesting techniques against a target of 80%. Fish productivity increased steeply by 324%. The project also generated employment of approximately 1 lakh fishers who were landless and belonged to weaker sections of the community. Now the second important project that I would like to talk about is the Odisha Community Tank Management Project 
a background of the project is the tank irrigation systems in Orisha are centuries old. The tank system structures were mostly constructed under the kingship uh, to support the basic human needs of drinking. There were about uh, 3600 tanks in the state of Odisha. Government of Odisha with funding from World Bank undertook to repair and rehabilitate approximately 320 minor irrigation tanks having a command area of 40 hectares to 2000 hectares under the Odisha State Community Tanks Management Project OSCTMP. The project covered 64,000 hectares in 12 districts of Odisha uh, and about 111 minor irrigation uh, projects were uh, proposed to be rehabilitated for QAQC and uh, 55 were under the northern uh, districts of uh, Angul, Jharsagoda, Bahalgad and Balsavar. Now the principles underlying the project design were a decentralized mechanism where the main tank beneficiaries play a productive role in planning, implementing and sustaining project interventions. The tank system rehabilitation work meets technical quality and safety standards and pays adequate attention to social, environmental and fiduciary uh, considerations to improve agriculture technology and practices. MSV played a crucial role in OCTMP uh, project. MSV uh, was hired as an expert consultant uh, for this World Bank funded project to provide uh, third party quality control and quality assurance uh, services for rehabilitation of the tank systems. MSV provided similar services that we provided for the Andhra Pradesh uh, tank management project which I just uh, discussed in the previous slides. And here also there was a remarkable change in the overall uh, productivity in crops in Odisha. With this, I would like to sincerely thank CIDC for uh, giving us an opportunity to present our credentials in the irrigation and agriculture sector in this uh, prestigious ICW conference 2020. Thank you all. Outside, we would like to congratulate CIDC for organizing one of the biggest online digital conferences which will benefit the construction industry as a whole. During COVID times, when movements are restricted to a big extent, the efforts of CIDC team is really commendable. We appreciate that the platform hosted so many professionals, experts, industry groups from the construction sector and allied industries who identified key issues for an intelligent discussion and at the same time shared their expertise through this platform. We thank CIDC team for encouraging us to participate in this mega digital event. We presented our vivid experience in numerous sectors of civil and agricultural engineering and also got an opportunity to share our rich experience and expertise in highway irrigation and other related sectors. MSV believes in a partnering philosophy and have partnered with more than 200 firms from across the globe for taking up large infrastructure projects in India and abroad. We extend a warm welcome to the participants of ICW 2020 for joining hands with MSV for taking up large projects worldwide. With this, we once again thanks CIDC for organizing this mega event. It was our pleasure to be part of ICW 2020. Thank you so much. Namaskar. My name is Sunil Mahajan. I'm additional DG of CIDC. After graduation from IIT Kanpur and with an MBA in between, 23 years in industry, I joined CIDC at the turn of the millennium year 2000. This five day event is drawing to a close and we are heading towards the con uh, final session. I won't say concluding because construction is an unending activity. It is time to say thank yous and till we meet again. We don't believe in goodbyes. And why is that? Construction is a large field and 
needs to grow even larger and better. So everyone who has joined us in this event is forever on a part of our family. Anytime anybody wants to do anything for improvement or expansion of the industry, you are welcome. You are welcome to join hands with us and we can, we can mutually support each other for this purpose. Specifically in the agro-technology and infrastructure sector, this was a steering group which was set up under the command of uh, chairmanship of uh, Pro uh, Padam Shri Professor Brahma Singh who has also or many other laurels to his name and under his label, uh, able leadership we had uh, superb presentations by Shri C. Dev Rajan, by Shri Pushkar Malik Shri R. K. Singh and Shri Lakshman Kumar Palata Singh. Shri Lakshman Kumar is a former Deputy Director of Agriculture in Epicol. Shri R. K. Singh is, is Project Coordinator in uh, AI All India Coordinated Research Project on Plastic Engineering and ag Agricultural Structures and also an expert in post-harvest engineering and technology. Mr. Pushkar Singh is the M MD of MSG International uh, India, uh, an eminent company which is also highly involved in agriculture technology. And to top it all, we, ha we have uh, a, our, a mentor, a guide for the entire event and otherwise of, for CIDC, uh, Sri Devaraja. He is the MD of one of the largest construction companies in India, URC Construction, and has extensive uh, interests in agriculture. He is one of the prime applicators of technology in construction in all his uh, agriculture enterprises. We also had a session on air conditioning and refrigeration which is going to play a very major part in the when we expand our agricultural technology. We will need a series of cold chains, a series of uh, climate controlled warehouses and in fact uh, we will be coming to that later. The, uh, the uh, session and the steering group for this segment were headed by an IIT Kanpur graduate, Shri Vikram Murthy, who is a first generation entrepreneur and has expanded his business tremendously in air conditioning and refrigeration. We had uh, the head of uh, president of ISHRAE, uh, Indian Society for Heating and Refrigeration and Air Conditioning. Uh, Shri Richi Mittal, who gave a very inspiring five minute speech. Mr. Shri Jitendra Bhambure, uh, the, uh, from Rama Manufacturers Association. Shri Vishal Kapoor, also from Ishre. And Shri Ellen Krishna, from again from Rama. And the president of Rata, that's the Traders Association. Rama is the Manufacturers Association. So we have, we have had uh, uh, the representation of all the three uh, associations of air conditioning uh, people in India. <coughs> the national president of uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Nata, Rata gave an amazing and very good. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The ideas which we plan to convert into many uh, touch points in the future where all of us will and then this is going to be put in infrastructure and the other has uh, put together this session. Tejain from Tosta Manufacturers, Professor Santosh Kapuria from CSIR uh, Structural Engineering uh, actually change many of the collaborating during the uh, section committee Mishra from Algo 8, Prof. Jail Nora and from Anupama Kohli.
and additional committee meetings who contributed in to the development of the thought the idea and you saw the execution all this during the times of disruptions as they say that change they used to say that uh, the change is the only constant but today it seems the pandemic has taught us that disruption is the only constant so the only way forward is that all of us need to align ourselves with the new normal we need to uh, uh, scale up our capabilities we need to actually change many of the things that we have been doing and align them with technology as disruption happens emerging technologies are there to support you so these two things need to be the disruption needs to be aligned with technology and you need to do some crystal ball crystal ball gazing to see the next bend in the road all this had could not have been possible without the able support of our sponsors i must thank people and patrons from apple chemi india private limited ircon international limited gulf p global asphalt gr infra projects limited sudha sudhakar pipes and fittings afcons infrastructure limited shapur ji and palan ji fenesta windows building architecture and engineering chennai and cqra pune for their whole hearted support and financial uh, support that, that they have provided to this event going forward i request all of you to keep yourself abreast with the uh, latest that would be happening in your groups we have already had the whatsapp group and that's uh, uh, we try to basically keep you updated through that communication and off and on we would also be writing uh, detailed mails and uh, talking on phone so that the connect remains intact so whatever your thoughts whatever your feedback whatever queries you have do share with us and uh, that will help us in basically forming the agenda going forward in the next year this event has taught us that the theme that we had in mind revival of the construction industry post covid the covid it's not over as yet but then we have had despair and then we have lot of hope perhaps the vaccine is on the cusp of delivery and soon we may have a medication as well but all along during the pandemic one thing that all of you have done is work on your immunities build your systems to fight the pandemic and that is what these events are meant for so that we all contribute in thought and process and we strengthen the construction industry per se through our contributions through creating replicable best practices so wonderful people thank you so much for your contributions to the event and i wish you seasons greetings and best wishes for a very happy new year in advance thank you so much ladies and gentlemen good day to all of you I am Rajiv Jain, Director Training CIDC. Time doesn't stop is a universal truth and we have to manage our activities in accordance to the movement of time. I am happy to share that with the support and active participation of all of you, we could manage this 5-day mega event well within time. The learned speakers from around the country and around the globe have shared their experiences on different aspects of construction industry and also they have shared during the crisis of this ongoing pandemic how their respective countries are managing to cope this current crisis the event had multiple parallel conference tracks and i had been personally coordinating steering committees on three of the important tracks these were concrete technology real estate and skilling initiatives in india i must say the concrete chairman of these committees have put in their best efforts to bring in the most desirable topics for deliberation and the most competent experts to talk about these issues i am sure the delegates and the participants must have enjoyed the sessions of their interest let me share with you all that technical presentations 
will remain active on this portal for yet another two months and the presentations you have missed could be enjoyed again at your convenience anytime during this period. All the queries you might have may be directly emailed to the respective speakers and copy to CIDC. The details of individual speakers are available in the archives on this portal. Now while concluding my talk, I hereby acknowledge the most humble contribution and untiring efforts of Dr. S. K. Manjrekar, Managing Director, Sunanda Specialty Coatings Private Limited, who had chaired Steering Committee on Concrete Technology. Also, Shri B. D. Mundra, Chairman and Managing Director, Simplex Infrastructure Limited, who had chaired Steering Committee on Skilling Initiatives. I am also thankful to Shri Velamati Ramnath, Chairman Andhra Pradesh RERA and he chaired the steering committee on real estate. I am deeply thankful to all the 42 speakers from India and abroad for sharing their valuable knowledge and contribution on concrete technology and post-COVID recovery mechanism adopted in their respective countries with all our participants. Further, my heartfelt thank goes to all the learned speakers for enlightening us on issues related to skilling initiatives and changed dynamics in the era of COVID-19. I am also grateful to the learned speakers for raising the issues related to the real estate sector and proposing their viewpoints on how to amicably resolve all these issues. I am also thankful to all the sponsors and exhibitors. In particular, my thanks goes to Andhra Pradesh RERA, Himachal Pradesh RERA, Chhattisgarh RERA and Ardex Endura for their valuable contributors, contributions as sponsors. Last but not the least, I wish to thank all the participants, my colleagues, for their active and untiring efforts to make this event a great grand success. Thank you all. Stay safe and remain connected. Jai Hind. Good day to all. Now that we have concluded both the sessions on disaster management, I'd like to place on record my sincere thanks to all the experts for providing us insight in this post-COVID scenario. However, with the presentations, we have come to realize that COVID is not the only thing to be worried about in these times. There are other disasters which have been identified, solutions given, and also the action points have been discussed. I'd like to thank our experts, Dr. Chandan Ghosh, who is also the chairman of the steering committee, and he delivered the presentation on disaster resilient construction a step towards sustainable habitat. Mr. Amandeep Gurd spoke upon how construction sector could help in disaster mitigation and contribute for the growth of the nation. Dr. Krish Chandu shared his experience on owner-driven construction houses. Mr. Rajendra Desai spoke about building artisan education program and also on retrofitting of amazing rebuilding why and how. Dr. Nilima Satyam told us about advances in ground improvement, bio-geotechniques of granular soils. Dr. Pramod Deshpande spoke on risk assessment and risk management approach for construction business in the post-COVID scenario. Dr. Abhijit Ganguly delivered his presentation on non-destructive testing and concrete infrastructure industry. And engineer Vijay Gupta spoke on disaster management, whereas Dr. Hemant Kumar Vinay shared his thoughts on construction beyond municipal boundaries of Himachal Pradesh, which was really an issue of concern. Mr. S.K. Dhawan spoke on construction management issues. I'm sure we all learned a lot on mitigation of disasters and how to move forward development of the society. It is my pleasure to share with you that these presentations will be on the site for the next three months. I look forward to having all the queries and suggestions on these topics. 
especially from the students, to enable taking knowledge forward. We could also focus on specific programs where knowledge is needed. So I would look forward to your queries on special programs that we can conduct. Thanks a lot for all of you to be with us. Thank you. Good day, everyone. I am Rajiv Jain, Director Training, CIDC. I believe all of you have enjoyed all the technical sessions and it has been a great learning experience for all of you. As we are about to conclude this mega international event, I would like to place on record my heartfelt thanks to all the steering committee chairmen, esteemed committee members, all the speakers, sponsors and exhibitors, and all of you dear participants. In particular, I wish to thank on behalf of my colleague, Mr. Deepak Majumdar, who had been coordinating a few important steering committees. The steering committee on cement was chaired by Mr. Sanjay Mathur, Chief Special Initiatives Officer, Ultra Tech Cement Limited. He has provided valuable guidance and also highlighted the core issues related to cement industry in India. We express our heartfelt gratitude for him to spare his valuable time and chairing this important committee. We also thank the esteemed committee members who gave their critical inputs to make this track of conference more interesting and meaningful. I am confident that the deliberations will go a long way in highlighting the role of Indian cement industry in the revival of construction industry post-pandemic. I am also thankful to Mr. Y.P. Kajale, Vice President, Engineering, Planning and Design, BG Shirke Construction Technologies Private Limited. Mr. Kajale chaired the steering committee on prefab construction and pre-engineered buildings. My thanks goes to Mr. P.V. Rao, who co-chaired this committee and provided the insights of the issues concerning prefab industry. In total, there were 16 speakers for this track of conference. The steering committee on steel was chaired by none other than Mr. Anil Kumar Chaudhary, who is chairman SAIL. And the committee was also coordinated by Shri Gauri Shankar Dube, former ED SAIL. The committee discussed the methodology for increasing the consumption of steel in real estate and infrastructure sector. It was suggested that while formulating any projects, the life cycle cost component must be considered invariably. Presenters also discussed about waste management in integrated steel plant for manufacturers. Usage of steel was recommended for rural housing and agro sector. In total, there were 12 speakers in the steel track of conference. I am thankful to all the speakers. Special thanks to Mr. Anil Kumar Chaudhary for his valuable guidance and support. I am also thankful to Mr. Gauri Shankar Dube for coordinating with the speakers. My thanks to all the esteemed members of the committee and all the speakers and participants. There was another group on international collaboration. It was constituted to create a forum aiming at global partnership, especially amongst the countries in Asian region for knowledge sharing and technology transfer, etc. The group constitutes members, especially from Asia construct member countries and invites and support to explore areas of mutual cooperation on the theme revival of construction industry post COVID-19 by understanding the strategies adopted by the respective countries and policies adopted by respective governments to tackle this ongoing pandemic. The group was chaired by Dr. P. R. Soru, who is DG CIDC, and the prominent members include representatives from Hong Kong Polytechnic University, CSDP Indonesia, Philippines Academy of Managers for Construction and Cities, Vietnam CIDA, Sri Lanka, Philippines Overseas Construction Board, Embassy of Philippines, SPIU Uttar Pradesh, Samrat Ashok Technological Institute, Vidisha. The following important issues were discussed during this track of conference. Effect of COVID, how Asia Construct member countries are handling the pandemic and how the experience could be useful to each other. Human resources, shortage of labor, skill training were among some of the major issues. Industry perspective, recommendations for policy change post-COVID, global scenario and adoption of new technology and good practices. I am confident that the International Collaboration Group will take a lead in providing the blueprint for action and way forward for the revival of construction industry in Asian region and globally by creating better opportunities and finding cost-effective solutions through infrastructure development, 
revising procurement practices, capacity building, and so on. I thank the chairman and members of the committee for sharing their knowledge and providing inputs for taking it forward. We also express our thanks for the patronage of our sponsors, without which this conference could not have been successful. My thanks goes to Institute of Lean Construction Excellence, JK Cement Limited, BG Sirke Construction Technologies Private Limited, URC Construction Private Limited, Steel Authority of India, Dextra Group, Ultra Tech Cement Limited, Ready Mix Concrete Manufacturers Association. Lastly, I would like to remind you that the pandemic is still on. Take care of yourself, keep learning and improving the living spaces around the world. Thank you once again. Thank you all. Jai Hind. I'm sure at the end of it, we would be able to have clear action plans for the central, the state government and the stakeholders to move ahead. I take this opportunity to thank, profusely thank the Goa government for its support and for the sincerely appreciate the tremendous efforts put in by Dr. Swaroop and his team, including Mr. Samir Sulakar and Mr. Rasik Naik in organizing and making this event happen. Uh, finally, on behalf of Vibrant Goa Foundation, I would like to wish all the delegates the very best and hope you will have a highly productive conference. Thank you all. On behalf of Construction Industry Development Council and Indian Society for Trenchless Technology, I, Pavan Kumar Mishra, Additional Director, would like to express our sincere gratitude to all who have contributed directly or indirectly to organize India Construction Week 2020. India Construction Week 2020 has been divided in several streams to cover the entire spectrum of construction. Academia is one of them. I would like to express my sincere gratitude to Professor P.K. Garg, <coughs> Vice Chancellor former Vice Chancellor Uttarakhand Technical University and Professor IIT Rurki for, for his hum humble but great leadership to organize the Academia stream of the ICW 2020. Professor Gob Govind Pandey, co-chairman of the steering committee and the other members of his steering committee like Professor Fantosh Kapuria, Director CSIR, SERC Chennai, Professor N. Gopal Krishnan, Director CSIR, CBRI Rurki, Professor Manu Santhanam, IIT Madras, Professor Bharat Lohani, IIT Kanpur, Professor Rajan Chaudhary, IIT Guwahati, Professor J.S. Chauhan, Director, SATI Vidisha, Professor Chandandas, IIT Jammu, Dr. Anil Kumar, SPA, SPIU, Uttar Pradesh, Dr. Ajay Chaurasia, CSIR, CBRI, Rurki, Dr. M.K. Srimali, NIT Jaipur, Dr. P.K. Ramcharala, Triple IT, Hyderabad, Dr. Ramkrishna Baik, IIT Patna, Professor Aldo T.I. IIT Bombay, Dr. Nilma Fatyam IIT Indore, Professor Devendra Mohan IIT VHU Varanasi, Professor N. Raghavan IIT Madras, Professor Farad Das IIT ISN Dhanbad, Dr. Avijit Ganguly IIT Tirupati, Dr. R.N. Khare, Principal VSC Lakhanpur, Chhattisgarh. All these are the members of the steering committee and they have contributed a lot. They have spared their very, very valuable time to organize successfully the India Construction Week 2020. We are very thankful to our nation, National Action Group chaired by Professor J.S. Chauhan, 
and other members members in action group we are privileged to to share that the professor and sen senior faculties from almost all iits all nits and very great uh, institutions are the member of our national action group our senior sincere thanks to all of them for their active very active roles in the india construction week 2020 we are privileged to inform that more than 10000 10000 academicians faculties and students have been actively participated in the icw 2020 we are also very thankful to all speakers we have received more than 50 technical presentations from again i am repeating from almost all iits nits and big institutions from all states of the nation from all parts of the nation we have received the technical presentation we are very thankful to the contributors to the speakers for sparing their valuable time for sharing their very great and very great and valuable information and knowledge we are very grateful to all of them for their active participation we are very thankful to state project implementation units especially uttar pradesh bihar madhya pradesh jharkhand odisha jammu and kashmir rajasthan and himachal pradesh for their coordination with institutions faculties and students and for providing the opportunities to the students to have support financial support from the take up funds we are very grateful to all of them we are really very grateful to all of them thanks thanks to all dear dear sir and madam i pawan kumar mishra additional director cidc is expressing this sort of thanks message on behalf of professor op gupta vsm acting registrar cisc respected dr udesh kohli chairman cisc and dr p r swarup member secretary cisc dignitaries for the valedictory session ladies and gentlemen i am honored to get an opportunity to thank you all on my behalf and on behalf of cisc in the capacity of acting registrar cisc on the concluding day of the five days events india construction week 2020 digital conference and exhibition this event consists of several segments including cidc cisc dispute resol resolutions and arbitration there are 30 papers on negotiations mediations and arbitrations including three from foreign usa ms aina duggal and singapore barrister jamshed peru advocate dr renu rao london and all the states and union territories from india the videos presented are from veterans in their own fields like town planning architecture chartered accountants and income tax litigations and adr
joint venture disputes, online dispute resolution, how to make India an international arbitration hub, methodology to be adopted for dispute resolution post-COVID-19, critical analysis of arbitration acts and its amendments, contract law and its drawbacks, remedies, and so on. I would like to thank all the authors, speakers, and members of the organizing team of the event for five days in the front row and in the green room, particularly Mr. Anand. I especially thanks to engineer A.P. Radhakrishnan, Chennai, for getting principal partner Afcons and engineer H.K. Verma, coordinator Odisha for arranging message of, uh, messages of Honorable Governor, Honorable Chief Minister, and Honorable Minister of Panchayat Raj of Odisha. Heartfelt thanks to all 284 impaneled arbitrators and mediators and 20 coordinators from states from North, East, West, and South, PSUs, and professionals for their wholehearted support and participation. I will be failing in my responsibility if I don't thank to Dr. Niranjan Sarup, Dr. Suchita Kumar, Engineer P.K. Mishra, Ms. Lakshmi, and Ms. Jamiti for their relentless support. My sincere thanks to them. CISC appeal and impress upon all the government departments and PSUs for encouraging institutional arbitration for dispute resolutions by incorporating such CISC arbitration clause in their contract, con contract documents because CISC it's, is pride and reputed arbitral institution in India. CISC further requests all the stakeholders that two tiers arbitration clause be not provided in the contract, particularly in international contracts, because the same is not in the interest of any party and India. I would like to express my sincere thanks my sincere gratitude to all of them, to all, to all of them. Thanks, Professor O. P. Gupta, VSM, Acting Registrar, CISC. Thanks to all. Dear friends, a very good morning. I take this opportunity to welcome all the participants and delegates to this very important topic, reviving construction industry in the post-COVID world jointly organized by CIDC and the industry. We have all seen this unprecedented global pandemic striking us in early 2020 and bringing the global economic scenario towards standstill. The crisis, one of the largest since the Great Depression, impacted all countries, rich and poor, developed, undeveloped, and emerging economies. Millions of people have already been infected by this COVID crisis and across various geographies and few lakhs have not survived to see the post-COVID world. This has greatly impacted government fiscal situations. Companies have had to change their business models, social issues of growing unemployment, reducing earnings, expenses on health care and social security, etc. have altered the buying behavior of consumers. Certain sectors like tourism, hospitality, airlines, etc. have been hit very hard. However, every such major disruption is an opportunity to bring about a change in business models. Recast plans, revamp supply chains, develop new products to cater to a new, new emerging market. Innovation adoption and adaption are key elements 
to look at the new normal. We have seen work from home, radical increase in digital intervention, use of technology to drive e-commerce, use of digital platforms like Zoom and Microsoft Teams to connect globally, etc., have all grown in geometric proportions. Having seen this crisis, the construction sector has also witnessed some very challenging times. The sector saw crashing of the construction work on sites. In fact, uh, the lockdown in March and April saw all construction activities coming to a standstill. Factories had to stop production. Supply chains got stuck. Huge inventory of unsold stocks, rising working capital, and a financial crisis being faced by the industry. The steep fall in the financial markets, which was witnessed, the stock markets crashed world over on the fears of uncertainty and financial crisis. The first three months were frightening, uncertain, and fearful. There was drastic reduction in spending, consumer behaviors. In fact, most people were you know, was seeing this gloomy situation and they were wanting to curb all extra expenses to save for the future. However, after three months, that is uh, after July and August, certain green shoots were visible. And I think this was a result of the ability of human nature to adopt and adapt very fast. I think the first three months were basically adaption and adoption of new techniques to survive and to work. Now, the cement and concrete industry has also been no exception. Like any other industry which was impacted, the cement and concrete industry also went through this gloomy situation. In March end, when the crisis struck, plants got stopped. There was huge inventory on road, on, on rails, uh, especially of cement. And uh, so that really created a panic situation because people were uncertain as to you know how, what to do. But thanks to the very agile nature of mankind, I think uh, everybody came together, uh, put their heads together and uh, came out with solutions to really tied away this uh, situation. Uh, today morning, I have uh, a panel of very distinguished uh, uh, and experienced experts from the cement and concrete world. Uh, we have uh, Mr. S. V. Patil, who is the head of uh, RMC Ready-Mix Concrete and Key Accounts Business at Ultratech. Mr. Ramesh Joshi, who is the current president of the Ready-Mix Concrete Association of India and uh, also a senior vice president with Ultratech. He's uh, been a pioneer with the Ready-Mix Concrete division of Ultratech and uh, been with this division for the past 20 years. We have Mr. Atul Desai, who is the executive director and CEO of uh, RMC India, which is again a very large uh, concrete company. Uh, operating in India, Pan-India operations. And we have Mr. A.K. Jain, who is well known in the field of concrete and cement technology. Uh, he has spent uh, most of his time uh, in the military engineering services and then later on with Ultratech as a consultant. Uh, I welcome all the panelists to today's discussion and I would request you to uh, kindly take us through four major uh, events which have happened. How has the cement and concrete industry come out of this gloomy situation? How will the cement and concrete sector be a strong partner to India's dream of a $5 trillion economy? The third question would be what changes are we seeing in consumer demand and consumer behavior? new innovations, new products and technology, and the use of green cement, that is the increasing use of blended cement. 
and if you have to sum up the entire thing what are the key learnings of this crisis which will actually go a long way in in really uh, enabling uh, other industries or other uh, you know related the construction sector people to see as to what all has happened in the cement and concrete world and if there are any learnings which can be uh, implemented or used by the other sectors so on that i would like to welcome the panelists and uh, take this discussion forward thank you and i hope all of you have a fantastic uh, time uh, in this conference it's a, it's a great event and uh, i think it will give an opportunity for all of us to discuss what the future lies in store thank you my name is samir sullakar i represent the construction chemical industry which is directly dependent on construction industry be it infrastructure or real estate what a grand show we had in india construction week fantastic response first of all i congratulate dr p r swarup for conceptualizing such a cross functional and multi pronged program during this tough times with a view to revive the economy a timely initiative a great work a great thinking we had excellent contents on all forums like in the construction chemical session in concrete session in emerging technologies session in skilling in machineries as well as machineries and other related uh, topics we now have we now have a collection of ideas and technologies put forward by professionals academicians and experts which can form a base for developing a blueprint to revive the economy in days to come i appreciate very hard work put by cidc team as well as the team of indian society of trenchless tunneling for the nordic show with excellent coordination and follow ups and this was the reason for the grand success that we had event of such a nature it was on a large canvas and we have done very well this initiative is just a beginning or a first step towards working on our common goal of revival of economy which is very important for our industries not only survive in days to come but also to flourish and get back to the time to the olden times or the golden times now you can see congratulations to the organizers for grand success of india construction week 2020 and nordic show great contribution to civil engineering industry as well as this was an excellent forum for students for learning and absorbing about new technologies which they can use in their internship programs and maybe they can even add in their curriculum at the college and the post graduate and doctoral levels and this topics can be also used for skill development some technologies which we covered they can be used by young engineers to turn into entrepreneurs with a training and with the machineries and the other type of techniques and knowledge about materials they can be a good entrepreneurs because it is nowadays with in this time uh, getting jobs is a bit difficult and this is a low uh, entry low entry field so i wish also the student fraternity and the new engineers all the best at the end of the day it was a great show it was an excellent show and we should we really had a great learning experience congratulations to all in world thank you hello and good morning 
I'm Himanshu Kapadia and today I'll be discussing some of the smart systems for building envelope. Let me try to share my screen with you so you can see the content. What we are including today is some high productivity waterproofing systems, uh, how to get comfort uh, at lower energy cost with the insulation systems, peculiarity of the precast structures, and based on what we discussed, setting the tone for future. The challenges we are faced with today are linked to a shortage of everything we have around us. Shortage of money, shortage of time, shortage of skilled labors. And on top of it, a lot more freedom demanded by our designers because we keep changing the the usage of the building even before it is constructed. You're constructing a commercial building and then midway you decide to convert it into the hotel. Or you decide to put a swimming pool in the basement or a jogging track on an intermediate floor. All these challenges demand different solutions than what we have been doing. And yet we have to keep our eye on the capital employed and needless to say earlier we complete the project and operationalize better is the return on the capital employed when it comes to waterproofing our age old practice is to use the stone cladding or mud fusca or the brick beds they are all very slow and inefficient systems. A crew of 10 to 15 produces just about 100 or 150 square meters in a day, and the overall operation can take as much as two weeks to complete. Of course, there have been changes with time. We have had other chemical systems coming in, which you have to brush apply or roller apply or torch on, but none of them are either as efficient or long lasting. Modern chemistry solutions allow us to adopt new methods, for example, spray applied materials where just a crew of four people can do about 1000 square meters in a day. So one fourth of the skill labor required to do almost five to six times of application in a day's time. Various solutions available. I would pick one for discussion today, which is polyurea hybrids. From acrylic cementitious material, we moved on to polyurethanes long time ago, which had great amount of flexibility, but not so good mechanical property. And then came hot applied polyurea with great mechanical property, but not so much flexibility. A hybrid which combines the advantages of both can last for as much as 25 years, 30 years. It can be applied much faster. This will be my proposal for today. But the story does not end here. It's also connected to the installation. Material alone can only give you a certain amount of assurance. The installation capability is another big factor in successful waterproofing application. When the leakage takes place, your installer provided you have a good installer will come and seal the leakage, but water is already entered. If it is an infrastructure project designed for 100 years or 120 years life, 
the deterioration of the structure has already started. The reinforcement corrosion starts and your expected service life comes down. If you're running a hotel, as I am presenting in this case here, uh, which is based on a real case in Bangalore some time ago, 20 leaking rooms ended up having 2.3 crore cost in repairs, refurbishment and loss of revenue for three months. The devil is in detail. A good installer understands how to terminate joints, how to use the right material in the right way. Our clients often look at the warranty paper while deciding the installer, but warranty is just a paper. It cannot prevent all other losses if the leakage takes place. So we have to be very careful while evaluating the capabilities of the installer. Let's move on to another important aspect, which is the energy consumption. We know the impact of climate changes. Summers are getting hotter. Winters are getting colder. There's flood taking place even in the cities where the water table used to be very, very low in, in the earlier times. We build urban heat islands. I'm sure you all know about this term where the tall buildings, dense infrastructure increases the ambient temperature by as much as six to eight degrees compared to uh, rural areas. Now the whole world is talking about reducing the carbon footprint. And bringing back the climate or having the climate control to stop further deterioration. India has also signed into these global protocols and in turn. Our. Our government. Our controlling agencies have also come up with measures. So ECBC, for example, has come up with their guidelines to reduce the energy consumption into the buildings. The ECBC guidelines. Primarily divided into three different categories of codes, depending on the location type of building and. The primary code, the ECBC guidelines are mandatory if the commercial structure, commercial building has at least 100 kilowatt of the the connected load. What these guidelines prescribe? They prescribe U value, which in a way is the measure of energy consumption per unit volume of the building. Certain certain building types, for example, hotel or the hospitals where the air conditioning runs 24 hours. The requirement is even stiffer. And this is progressively being made stiffer. So we are looking at two aspects, waterproofing and the insulation to reduce the energy consumption in the building, both at the same time. The insulation can be achieved by using a variety of materials. On this slide, on the right side, I'm showing you a chart which gives the efficiency of different types of insulation material. Polyurethane foam, puff as we call it, is the most efficient insul insulation material available today. What you can see here is the other materials or the thickness of the other materials required to meet the same insulation property as polyurethane puff. A 50 millimeter of the foam gives the same insulation as 1.8 meters thickness of big bed coba. Of course, we won't do that that much thickness and all other materials in between. 
and where do we apply these materials? Do we do it above the deck or below the deck? The best answer is to do it above the deck because you are preventing the heat penetrating into the substrate roof material. Of course, if done under deck, not only we don't prevent the heat coming in, but also it's a lot of inconvenience depending on the usage of the area where the under deck insulation is done. I remember a case a long time ago when I was just new into the civil engineering industry. The organization where I was working, we had to reconstruct the whole roof slab where the under deck insulation was done. The leakage from top accumulated between the insulation and the roof slab corroded the whole reinforcement and it resulted into replacement of the slab. As I mentioned earlier, the combined waterproofing and insulation for the maximum effect is the best way forward. For the commercial structures, a combination of good waterproofing material like the polyurea spray and PUF with about 50 kg per cubic meter density, close cell content of 90 to 95% is the best solution. In about 50 to 80 millimeter thickness, you can achieve desired results. And where the demand is not so high, we can also use thin sprays of slightly higher density of foam. Now the advantage of this higher density foam, roughly about 60 kg per cubic meter, is that it itself is also a waterproofing uh, layer. So say about 10 to 30 millimeter thickness will give desired result, saving 40 to 80% of the heat gain. Let me show you a video which shows the spray of this thin applied higher density foam. is not complete if you talk if you don't talk about the walls. The roof and the wall together is the source of almost 70% of the heat gain. I understand there's another presentation on walling systems, the external insulation and finishing systems uh, in this conference, so I'll not get into the details. I'm proud to show you the picture of 
this hospital in Faridabad, which used about 6000 square meters of external insulation on the walls. Let's move on to another trend for rapid construction, which is precast. Saves considerable time. We started long time ago replacing element by element in a cast in situ structure. The columns and then came the beams, then came slabs. And now we are having even the bathroom pods and the three dimensional structures like staircase. So a building is actually being built like a Lego system. What challenges it poses for the leakage prevention? It's not only the thermal stresses, but also the deflection, which starts becoming a big consideration while designing waterproofing for the precast structures. We have one more challenge in the precast structures. Work once done determines how good is going to be the performance during the service life. Extremely difficult to find the source of leakage after the structure has been put to use. So design, in fact, the waterproofing also has to be designed with the same level of seriousness as the precast structure. And we also see what is happening in the market at the moment. To save time, our constructors convert from the cast in situ to the precast structure, but every other specification remains almost similar. So the same waterproofing which was chosen for the cast in situ structure goes into the precast structure, and then we have incorporated problems right from the day one. What essentially precast structure demands is the greater flexibility in everything we use. The joints are extremely important. They need to be sealed with flexible materials, multiple types available. Uh, I'm talking about here polyester, thermoplastic, elastomeric material for precast joints. They are embedded in the PUR system, the PUR waterproofing systems, which you apply for waterproofing. We have to ensure that we use flexible tile adhesives and we use bond breaking tapes on the corners. So talking to installer and talking to the material supplier right at the time structure is a prudent way of sealing the precast structures. Having covered the aspects of waterproofing, energy saving using insulation and the critical aspects of precast, I would come to the end and summarize what we discussed. The industry mega trends, if I had to capture in four words, these are safety, durability, productivity and sustainability. And then the owners have to juggle with the aspects of time, money and resources while taking decision on any, any system being used. The result of this mega trend in the way we will do the selection and apply materials in future is looking at the productivity, mechanized methods, old systems like brick beta, brick bed coba being replaced with high productivity systems like polyurethane, polyurea spray applied systems. Far bigger focus on energy saving. In fact, my recommendation also to the government would be to upgrade all the buildings and reduce energy consumptions. While I was posted in Singapore and looking after the business in China, I was involved in, in the projects having millions of square meters of external insulation being done 
onto the government buildings only because china also wants to show to the world that they are serious about the the climate change durability plays important role and we must start looking at the life cycle cost and not just the initial cost the capability score for installers uh, they should be incorporated in the vendor selection and not just the lowest price that would be a pragmatic approach and then the aspect of sustainability increasing use of materials locally produced so that we have lower carbon footprint less less emissions in car carting the material to the project sites lower toxicity uh, material having less volatile content uh, new and environment friendly construction practices so precast for example Hello ladies and gentlemen as we all know the world is facing a horrid time due to covid-19 and the construction industry also has been adversely affected by this pandemic there are many challenges